Hey guys, it's Brian again. Uh, today we're going to be talking about pressure washer pumps and how they actually work. What what happens in a pump? Uh, a lot of people don't realize the process. So I figured I'd go through this, and this might help you out understand what may be happening with your system when, when uh, you have a problem. Uh, before we get started, safety, safety glasses, or whatever you may need for whatever the job is you're doing. With that being said, as I've always said this is no substitute for a good certified shop to go to but this is a this is a learning experience for you so uh, just to help guide you in, in the process of using your machine um, and as I've always said this is a working shop so there's times I have to stop my videos I don't like doing that I like to run straight through get to the point and uh, educate people so like I said today we're going to talk about pressure washer pumps there's different types of pressure washer pumps you have direct drive which is this machine it directly hooks to the engine here and the engine rotates the coupler the coupler end up uh, will end up operating the pump itself this is a belt drive this will have a pulley and a belt that runs and it's vertical right now it's not the way it's supposed to be um, the there's a pulley here that attaches to the engine the engine rotates rotates the pump so that's how they actually have the work applied to the pump themselves to make them operate so <clears throat> before we get too started here too too deep in this i want you to think of a pressure washer pump as a car engine in this case it's a three-cylinder car engine now the reason i say that and you're going to find out i'm going to highlight these things as we go through it's going to operate just like an engine Ex instead of fuel and air being mixed to cause combustion and then you have uh, the powers created at that point this is a three-cylinder engine that runs off of water if you will that granted like we said we have the engine that's producing the power to cause this to actually work but if we picture this as a car engine this will help you understand what's happening in this pump um, i'm not going to try to make this long i want to make this direct and to the point because that's the way I like my videos when I'm watching videos myself direct and to the point so we're gonna have your water or your fuel is coming in here this is the low pressure side this is the high pressure side the water comes in it goes into the lower chamber which is gonna have a set of valves just like your intake valves on your car engine this is a valve right here the water will push in through the center, pushes back on the spring, allows it into this area here. And when the water comes into this area, it can't push back because the spring pushes that plate down. It's like a valve will do. Valve, or the intake goes up and down. This goes up and down inside, and it prevents the gases in the car engine from going back or the, the fuel air uh, from going back into the, the intake. Same situation here. This prevents it from going back to the uh, introduction of your fuel or your water once it reaches in here there's three pistons we're going to look at those in a second that will pull the, the the fuel in and they alternate and then when the piston comes forward it pushes it to the high pressure side where there's another set of valves same situation your water gets pushed through the valve comes to this side and because it's a one-way valve the water can't get pushed back down into the low pressure side and then it comes out through your unloader your unloader regulates the pressure kind of like a throttle clockwise gives you more pressure or more throttle of the pump not the engine L left gives you less throttle or less pressure okay so we got intake low pressure side valves intake valves and up here you got your exhaust valves, which exhausts the water to the unloader, which is kind of like a throttle that increases or decreases your speed or pressure to your water. Okay, now we're going to pull, literally this is called a head, just like on a car engine. This is a head. Uh, we're going to pull the head off so you can see the pistons. Now you'll see on these pumps other things such as thermal valves and injectors and things like that they're something uh, as an accessory if you will so this is the back side of the head 
inside. The, the retainer came off of these two. They're on the pistons, not a big deal. That's the retainer there that holds all your packings in place. Your packings are like the rings on your piston. Without the rings on the piston in your car engine, you've got no compression. Same situation here. If these packings are bad, you've got no compression on your engine, okay? Or in this case, your pump. So you got no pressure. So there's a series of those in here. You have the retainers which hold everything together. All right? Now on the actual pump, these are your pistons. One, two, three. It's a three-cylinder piston. You can't count to three. You need to stop this video and leave because this is going to be beyond what you can deal with. Now, this is your piston with the retainer and some of the, the packings and whatnot, but, you know, we don't need to worry about that because that, that just kind of breaks down what you can see inside of there. So this piston is bare. Now, when the crank, and this coupler over here is a crank, when this crank or... Uh, uh, is rotated, you see your pistons are moving in and out, just like in a car engine. So your car engine is running. Ooh, you got a three-cylinder Geo Metro. You're killing it. All right. Now, just like in a car engine, your pistons can go bad. Some of these pistons are steel, and some of them are going to be ceramic. All right. So when they get wear on them, it's not a smooth surface the seals or the rings on the piston in the car engine begin to lose compression so you will lose pressure all right now we'll flip this over we're going to look on the inside now anybody who's had a car engine apart they're going to recognize a lot of what they see here yeah, it's a little dark let's see if i can get you a light in there all right So here is your uh, your camshaft, and here are your lower uh, uh, my mind has gone blank. Can't think and talk at the same time half the time. So <laughs> this is what connects your piston to your, your piston rod to the actual crankshaft right here okay now you see it's nice and smooth here shiny 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 so this is a good working order right here you have a set of bearings you got your racers and all of that and i'm going to rotate this so you can see exactly just like in a car engine boom that thing's rotating around all right now that's how your pump is actually working when it's rotating you have pressure as long as your seals and your piston and valves are good, just like in a car engine. Now, you can also tell that when I took this head off, it is separate from the crank. There's oil seals down in here. Those seals prevent water from getting into the crank and prevent oil from getting into your water. If you ever have water in here, you have a bad oil seal, all right? Which means you're running, it's kind of like a head gasket blown on your uh, your engine. You're going to get water mixing with the crank and the oil, and then that's going to damage your bearings, going to damage your uh, your everything. It's going to damage everything. There's, there's no way around that. Now, typically when that occurs, I always suggest replace the pump. Because by the time you buy these parts and replace these parts, you could have bought a new pump and a half. All right? And you see there's bearings on this side here and there's bearings on this side over here so whenever you get oil and water mixed it's actually damaging your bearings it's not lubricating properly so just go ahead and replace it now this pump is in good working order but i wanted to take it apart to show you what you had now notice this section here where it connects to the engine there's nothing you got a hole here you got a hole here and this allows you to access the keyway with your Allen wrench, there's, there's nothing in this. There's no fluids. So if you have oil when it's connected to the engine, if you got oil or water leaking from here, you've got problems because nothing should be in here. There's a seal right here that holds the oil in. 
So if you got water coming out, you got a major problem because you got a leak at the front end and a leak at the side over here. If it's just oil, then you got not a big deal. We can replace the seal and probably replace the bearings and you're good to go. So that's how this thing works. So it's rotating and you're building pressure, building pressure, building pressure. All right, you're good to go. All right. Now, what happens when we go back to what we were talking about a minute ago? And you have an issue where the oil seals have gone bad and water is getting into the crank. And this is why I say just replace the, the pump. Simply because a lot of times people don't realize water's getting in there. So this one has had that exact scenario. Water's gotten into the crank and this is what you get. So you see... One, two, three. There's your pistons with your connecting rods right here. Okay. This one's nice and dark. This one's real bright. And this one's missing. This one didn't get hot. This one got really hot. And this one got so hot that it actually broke. And there's the parts right there. Okay. And that's just like what happens in a car engine. It blows up, if you will. And it's hard to see. But right down in there... You can see where the piston, uh, excuse me, the broken parts hit the crank, actually shattered the bottom and dumped all the oil out. <clears throat> what you can see on the, the crankshaft, all the damage, you can see where the, I don't know if this will rotate or not, let's see, probably not, nah, it's solid. But you can see where the metal actually melted and fused, welded to the crankshaft. So this is, this is not, I won't say not repairable. This is not worth repairing. And this occurred because water went through the oil seals that we were talking about on this other pump through here. And if you stay on top of your repairs, you stay on top of what you're doing, there's a sight glass typically on the pumps. And they should be about half full. The red dot indicates where it should be filled. There's indicator arrow here, which indicates where it should be filled. If you watch this, if it's gold, black, honey colored, whatever, that's fine. When it starts turning white or milky or creamy, you got water getting in the crank. So you're, you're getting ready to have a catastrophic failure at some point in time. And when I say catastrophic failure, what you just saw on that pump was a failure, the big pump. This is a catastrophic failure. This has completely blown out the back side of the pump, the underside of the pump. You see all three <clears throat> uh, connecting rods uh, are shattered. It's just trash. And this is what we're trying to avoid. When this happens on somebody's driveway, you get a quart to a half a gallon of oil just dumping on their driveway now you got another job to deal with because you got to clean that up plus you got to pay to fix your pump and then of course you're gonna have an unhappy customer so let's try to avoid these things but i hope this gives you a better understanding that what you have in a pressure washer is an engine that runs off of gasoline that's producing power to an engine that operates off of water to give you pressure. You have a three cylinder engine on your pump, uh, on your washer. <clears throat> so that, that's how the actual pressure washer works to give you the pressure you need. Now again, there's other things you may find on these pumps. Uh, you may find um, easy starch, thermal dumps, chemical injectors, things like that. Those are just accessories on the pump to help you with uh, certain aspects of the job or starting the equipment or whatever the case may be. But that's the basics of how these pumps work and what they look like on the inside, what you should look for. Always look at your oil level, make sure it's good. It's not milky or cloudy or whitish, that's bad. No liquid should ever be leaking out of the engine side connection. If there's any liquid here, fluid of any sort, you got a problem. If it's oil, it's coming from here. If it's water, it's coming from way up here, going through and out of here. And that's terrible. They throw it away. Get another pump. But that's, that's the basic operations. Your valves, your pistons, your crank, 
your cam or your uh, um, uh, camshaft just like in a car engine or, or Briggs and Stratton or whatever you want to use as a reference point. But that's how we got uh, power from our pressure washer pumps. Hope that helps you out and helps you understand the situation better. If you've got any questions or comments, please drop them in my, my uh, email or you can go to my Facebook page and find me there. You can talk direct with pictures and everything. If you've got a problem, I can help you out. Until then, you guys be safe.